Welcome everyone to True Colors. I'm Kathy Ogeron. And I'm Jennifer Preeny, and we're with Brevard Cultural Alliance. Brevard Cultural Alliance is the designated local arts agency for all of Brevard County. We serve cultural organizations, artists, and present arts education programming in Brevard Public Schools, among lots of other things. We want to welcome you today for the second episode of True Colors, created and presented in partnership with BCA's Leadership Brevard Community Acceleration Team. With True Colors, Brevard Cultural Alliance seeks to increase diversity and inclusiveness for Brevard's cultural community. We want to provide a platform for new voices, and we thank you for joining us today. And now it is our pleasure to introduce the host of True Colors, Carrie Goff, Community Relations Manager for Brevard Achievement Center. And Shamika Chamberlain, owner of the Custom Ladybug. Carrie and Shamika. Thank you, ladies, for the nice introduction. Hi, everyone, and thank you again, Kathy and Jennifer. So I am actually super excited today because the Brevard Achievement Center was selected by Brevard Cultural Alliance to participate today. And so I actually get the honor of introducing one of my coworkers. So Lee Sorensen is who we're going to have on today. Um, Lee moved to the Space Coast as a child in 1959 and was fascinated by all of the activity going on at Cape Canaveral at the time, which was, she was watching rockets from her backyard. And fast forward to today, she has over 30 years of in her career under her belt, working with children who have emotional and behavioral challenges. Lee first saw, Lee saw firsthand how arts helped them tap into hidden talents, self-discovery, and a sense of freedom. So Lee is now retired from the public school system and lends her talents to the Brevard Achievement Center, managing our arts and outreach programs. So welcome, Lee. Oh, thank you. It's so good to see you both, Carrie and Shamika. I appreciate you guys having me on. I get to talk about one of my most favorite things, and that's the art program at Brevard Achievement Center. Um, but first, before we delve into that, I just wanted to mention that um, BAC's mission is to provide persons with disabilities with innovative services and opportunities to achieve personal success and we are dedicated to building communities that support members of all abilities in finding meaningful purpose and reaching their highest potential in life. That so is I'm, awesome. I'm thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. We're thrilled to have you here today. Can you tell us how does BAC's art program, is, how is it accessible in the community and how people can support individuals with, with disabilities? Well, we have lots of ways of, of reaching the community and, and making arts accessible. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind at the moment is, the, is our Recanto project. It's a, it's a program called Recanto, uh, Brevard's Heroes with Disabilities. And it's, it's been a long time coming. We've been collaborating with um, the King Center to present this really dynamic uh, show about people with disabilities, their contributions, their successes, their advice to us, their suggestions, um, that's gonna come together through an interview process and become a musical masterpiece. And so we're real excited that uh, that should be available in May and WEFSC, Eastern Florida State College, I think it's channel 1068, it's going to be broadcasting um, a recorded version. We had hoped to present this live at the King Center, but due to the circumstances of COVID, we're, we had to go ahead and just plan for a virtual event. Um, but we're hoping everybody will tune in and watch that. Um, we also uh, participate in the Cocoa Village Art Show, where we bring um, creations made by our participants and our artists in our studio. And, and we even, um, some of the artists will come and provide customer service to everybody uh, perusing our items and, and help sell their, their work. Uh, it's really uh, a cool couple of days. And, um, and then we also provide um, some of our items for sale in uh, local gift shops, one being the Holmes, uh, Regional Hospital Gift Shop and the Cocoa Beach Surf Shop up in um, 
then the Sheraton in the Cocoa Beach area, and then up in Titusville at the Titusville Art Gallery. Then we also have um, programs where we reach out to um, students in our local schools, both public and private. We have visiting artists that we hire and send out to actually go into classrooms and provide uh, not only a unique art experience for the students, but some professional development for some of the educators as well, uh, teaching them strategies on how to integrate the arts into their daily instruction. Um, that's real exciting to see. That's part of our Performing Arts Showcase, which we put on annually. Uh, we've been able to uh, take that program from the studio theater at uh, the King Center. In the last couple of years, we were able to move it to the main stage of the King Center, which expanded our audience availability, as well as uh, provided more opportunities for our performing artists to to wait backstage and have a more professional experience um, through this opportunity. And uh, we invite community members and leaders in our community and our school system and all the parents and family and, and anybody that wants to come. We even in, put an invite out to seniors in some of our assisted living facilities that come by by bus. And, and um, it's a it's a lovely morning at the King Center. And we all, always wrap it up with a reception with some light treats to eat afterwards. Um, but the artists get to mingle with, with the audience at the end. And so it's really a cool program. Uh, we're hoping to be able to do that this fall. And, and if not, the backup plan is, is to do, do it virtually. And, um, and then we also have annually a holiday car contest, which has been going on for many years through the sponsorship of Bob Molitor, personal injury law, I do a little commercial. Um, he sponsors this program and he takes um, the winning card and sometimes multiple cards and uh, uses them to create his, ho his holiday card that he shares with, oh, there's one of our winners from uh, last year, um, to share the card with his uh, clients and business partners and, and that kind of thing. And so we're very proud of that as he is. If you visit him on his office, he has pictures like this of every year. Um, when the, when the timing allows, he likes to go out to the schools and present the prizes because he always provides nice gift cards for the artists and the teachers. So it's a, it's a really cool program. And uh, another thing we do, which we're really in the throes of right now putting together is our a Color in Motion Arts Festival. We are in the 33rd year of this annual event. We typically hold it at the Brevard Zoo and it takes place over three days where we welcome over 1,100 students and over 80 some teachers and staff members and then countless more parents and chaperones and that kind of thing that come by buses. We invade the zoo, we take over, although it's still open to the public and we, we encourage everyone to um, that's a guest to the zoo to go ahead and participate because we have art stops located all around the zoo, which with make and take activities that our students and other zoo guests can can make. Um, we also have um, some entertainment going on, and one of the highlights is always the drum circle, which is a very interactive um, experience for our young artists. And this year. We, because of COVID and field trips not being allowed and that sort of thing, um, we've opted to do a virtual festival and we just finished the registration process for that. Um, however, anybody will be able to access it from our website, which will be launching um, the festival on April 5th. And if they just go to www.bac.brevard Dot com, at brevard.com and um, they can find the, um, the, a link to all the different art activities that we'll have on display. And uh, one thing that I'm, I'm really, really excited about is because I, and I just got them this morning is videos from the zoo. The education staff have been working with us 
And um, they've got some surprises up their sleeves for these kids uh, to see some things in the videos that they may not have be able to see when they come for the day with their classes. And so we're trying to make up for the loss of that in live you know, experience um, by including some really cool things in our videos. Um, I also have some really neat videos that we've just gotten from the students at Eastern Florida State College that they've made for us and some really cool different craft activities. And we're all, it's everything's related to the zoo this year around the animals. Um, so we're, we're really thrilled um, that we're able to continue with um, great staff that we have at BAC, Carrie, um, to provide these virtual experiences um, for our students and their teachers and their families and anybody that wants to access them on our website. So speaking of virtual experiences, we actually have a little virtual experience for you where we actually have a recap from last year's festival where we were still allowed to do it in person. So roll the video. The Brevard Zoo was full of excitement as more than 300 volunteers and over 1,000 students from exceptional education classes around the county took over with colorful art activities for the 32nd Annual Brevard Achievement Center Arts Festival. This year's theme, Color in Motion, showcased the arts with 10 stations located around our beautiful Brevard Zoo. Stations were hosted by Brevard Public Schools, the Brevard Zoo, Eastern Florida State College, the Greater Vieira Women's Club, Rockledge Knights of Columbus, and the Brevard Achievement Center's resident artist, Mary Moon. Students had the opportunity to let their creativity thrive in activities from decorating pinwheels, creating colorful ribbon dancers, participating in a drum circle, and other arts and crafts. In the weeks leading up to the three-day festival, artist Mary Moon visited with each participating classroom to create class flags that were displayed throughout the event. This annual arts festival could not take place without the help of our volunteers, sponsors, and the Brevard Zoo staff. We thank all of you for helping Brevard Achievement Center empower our youth to succeed in school and in their communities by engaging in quality arts experiences. I get, I get goosebumps just watching that. It, it's such a phenomenal three days. It's unbelievable to see the kids and how excited they are. And they even visit with each other from other schools, you know, old friends and that kind of thing. Teachers too. It's, it's really a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience. So that's a really great segue actually for the next question that we had and that is how does BAC utilize our arts program to help raise awareness for individuals with disabilities within our own community and like I said that's a great segue because that's almost interesting. Yeah <laughs> yeah and, and and you know all those community outreach programs that I just spoke about are ways that we do that too because they're all open to the public and anybody can participate and join and and we're always highlighting and showcasing our stars and and um, the wonderful contributions that they all make um, to our world. Um, one of the other things that we do is we do have a, a arts and public places program where we um, loan our artwork out. And for example, right now you can go to um, the Brevard County Health Department out in Vieira and we have um, many beautiful um, framed art pieces that uh, have been painted by our artists in our studio at BAC. And as a matter of fact, we just sold a couple last week. So that was kind of cool. Um, they're, you know, they're really there for display, but you know, if we can give a check to one of our artists for their, their work and their creativity, it's, um, it's very rewarding to see the satisfaction on their face when they get that paycheck you know, for what they did and in a creative area like, like the arts. So that's exciting. Um, we also do, our studio will take special orders and a year ago or so, Senator Wright 
uh, was on a tour of our studio and was enamored with the, the ceramic works that were going on. And, and um, so he commissioned us to make uh, 200 of these ceramic sharks that were about four, four inches long that he used as uh, gifts when he uh, returned to session in Jan last January to give to his other co-legislators. And um, here's a picture of the clay and some of our artists working uh, diligently on them um, from start to finish. They all had a hand in creating these pieces and even packing them up and having them ready for pickup um, by uh, the sen one of the senator's aides. Um, our, our artists were just thrilled. And there's Heidi, she's our teaching um, instructor in the studio working with one of our wonderful artists. Anyway, um, we, you know, we, we do do, like I said, special orders like that. And um, when people see, you know, everything stamped by BAC, initialed by the artist, and um, it really uh, reaches people uh, in different levels when they receive a gift that's handmade by one of our artists. Um, and it's a win-win for everybody. Um, we also, I'm real excited, we're on the verge of beginning a mural program and we, we met with our participants and asked them, um, you know, what kind of things would they like to see on this wall that we have in the courtyard um, at BAC in Rockledge. And so through a different selection process, they kind of narrowed down some ideas and we shared that with our resident artist, Mary Moon, and she's creating a mural that we will have um, our artists at BAC participate with her in a shared experience, a collaborative piece on the wall. And, and we hope that that program will continue to grow and we'd love to do a mural out, out in the community um, for uh, other people to see. So hopefully that will spread and become a more of an annual event as well. So those are just a few of the things that we do to help raise awareness in the community. Well, I'll tell you, Lee, I'm excited. I love all the amazing works and projects and programs that you guys are, are doing. But can you tell us how can the general public support and purchase art that is made in the studio at BAC? Yeah, so that's a great question, Shamika. Um, right now, we are, like, we are selling items in the gift shop at Holmes Regional Medical Center over in Melbourne, um, the Cocoa Beach Surf Shop in Cocoa Beach, uh, the Titusville Art Gallery up in downtown Titusville. And you can always come to the BAC library lobby <laughs> during uh, vis normal business hours. Um, but we do have protocols in effect and um, you would have to, you know, go through the screening procedure to be, and, you know, mask up to, to come into the building. Um, but we have a nice selection of items for display um, in the lobby where they, and they can be purchased there. So great plug for buying artwork for our artists. How can yeah. new artists get involved with our arts program? Well, um, since all situations are different, um, the best way, I, I, especially during these times, is just to contact me individually and we can talk, discuss, get to know each other and talk about um, what opportunities might be available. Or and, and if there isn't one, maybe we can create one. Sometimes we'll do that. And uh, sometimes that's, that's how new programs get started, you know, by needs in the community. So we'd love to hear from you. And artists too, artists wanting to volunteer, work with us. Um, we have some employment opportunities uh, on a limited basis for residencies. And so we're always looking for new talent to come in and, and work with our artists in the studio. That is awesome. So how can we support the studio at BAC and their outreach efforts? Well, I'm glad you asked that question too, <laughs> Shamika. <laughs> the studio at BAC operates on community donations and grants. So you can visit BACBrevard.com for more information about how to donate or how to give a gift directly to our arts program. Um, and when in doubt, give me a call. I'll help you. <laughs> so I think um, that was the last of our questions, but I think uh, people are probably going to want to get in touch with you, Lee. So perhaps we can get your contact info either into the chat or up on the screen. And um, I don't know if we have any questions from social that have popped in or not that we need to answer. Oh, there's your email. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's gonna email me. 
<laughs> Except the, I do have to say my last name is e S O R E N S E N. E N. So that will that will bounce back that email. Sorry. <laughs> little technical typo. <laughs> it, it, it's common. I've no, been through that my whole life. <laughs> but it's L-S-O-R-E-N-S-E-N at B-A-C Brevard dot com. Excellent. And if anybody wants to um, get in touch with Brevard Achievement Center, um, you can always call the office if you were wanting to come in and find out if you could see the artwork that's on display at the lobby. The phone number there is 321-632-8610. And of course, Brevard Achievement Center is located at 1845 Cogswell Street in Rockledge. Um, so if we're open and you're masked up and you pass our screening, then certainly you can come into our front lobby and check out our displays now just be aware like i said call ahead because with covid we have some some unusual protocols so you might not be able to get just a drop in definitely well i don't think we have any questions from the audience so i would definitely like to thank you for your time today thank you for joining us lee and letting us know all the dynamic arts programs that that bac has to offer we love all the work that Brevard Achievement Center is doing in Brevard County, and we definitely will support. This is your call and response, people. Go out and support BAC. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, ladies. It's been a pleasure. And like I said, my favorite topic to talk about. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.